God has given to you. So you must be able to, to, to know that Jesus has died for you. He died for you, for you to live a life of victory. Amen? Amen. It's the fear is a spirit. This spirit replaces your faith with fear. Amen? A spirit of fear, when it comes into you, it replaces your faith and gives you fear. Amen? Those who live in fear are able to walk in great faith. Amen? If they can switch from fear to faith. Praise God. Because fear is another kind of what faith at work. If you walk in fear, it means you have great faith. Praise God. Hello? <clears throat> where there is fear, faith cannot be in place. And where there is faith, fear cannot be what? In place. Amen? Fearful people are negative faith practitioners. If you are fearful, it means you are a negative, you have faith, but in a negative thing. You are a negative faith practitioner. Amen? Hello? <clears throat> so if you can channel your fear, amen, channel it, channel that energy of fear for, for, you know, into a positive faith, praise God, you will discover that you are a great man or woman of faith. If you're here today, you know how to be a friend. You, I, I, if, I, if you're a fearful woman, amen, then I've seen a great man or woman of faith. If you can reach channel that energy, you will discover that you have great faith, amen, that is at work in you, amen? amen. Hello, God's people. So, is there anybody here today that is a fearful person? Raise up your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for being honest, brother. Amen. If you're fearful, tell us, oh God, we know how to help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but okay, let's go to the message proper. One, I was asking myself, if you look at the book of First Kings, amen. First Kings, reading from 19, verse 1 and 3. I was asking myself, why did great men of old live in fear? Do you know our uh, most old patriarchs, like, like, you know, old patriarchs, like Abraham, amen? Old prophets, like Elijah, people like Job, they all live in fear. And I was wondering, this, these were great men of God. Abraham, I mean, was a man of faith, a man after God's own heart, praise God. Look at, uh, Elijah was a great a, a prophet of fire, amen? If he just wants fire, he throws it to you, Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And Job was a great man. The Bible calls him a righteous man. Yet we saw that all these men live in fear. Hello? Looking at, if you look at Gen... Uh, okay, where we... Okay, let me just read this. Before I read this, please. Hold, hold on, hold on. No. Before I read this, let me quickly show you a, a scripture. Or oh, don't go there because of time. I've got a lot of scriptures to show you. If you look at G G Genesis chapter 20, read from 1 to 2. You will discover that Abraham, you know, declared that his wife was his sister. Though she was the sister, partly his sister, but also she was his wife. Amen. But why did she, he declare that to the, to, to, to the men of Jera is because he was a fearful and afraid of his life. If you look at 10 and, two, and, and 11 of Genesis chapter 20, you will discover that when Abimelech asked him, why have you said this to us? Why did you tell us that your wife is your sister? In verse 11, he said, because I'm afraid that I may lose. No, he said, I'm a, he said I, may, I thought I was going to lose my life. In other words, he was afraid that, you know, if he said that his wife is indeed his wife, he was going to lose his life. Amen? They, though he was a great man of faith. How can great men of faith be afraid? Praise God. How can your pastor be afraid when people come with God? Amen? Even if everybody come, to, come with God, if anybody walk in here this morning with God and say, you know, renounce your faith, you all will probably renounce yours and we, you will not expect me to renounce mine. <laughs> you will think you are the pastor, you know? You know, be strong, praise God. If anybody comes here this morning and say to me, and say to us, look, if you are for Jesus, you know, come here. If you are for, Jesus, for, for Christ, be there. And those that are for Jesus, they're going to die today. You all will probably expect me not to renounce mine. Hello, God's people. <laughs> Even if you renounce yours, if I do it, you will be alarmed. So this Abraham was a great man of faith. We expect him not to be afraid of death. After all, when he dies, where will he be going? To the presence of God, amen? But yet, he renounced, he was afraid. In other words, he, he was living in fear in spite of his great faith, amen? Hello? We saw Job, you know, giving, you know, uh, sacrifice, you know, to God because of his children, amen? He was afraid. He was given a sacrifice based on fear in Job 1, verse 3 to 4, amen? 1, your one, one to four. You discover that Job actually was living in fear. Amen. How do we know that? If you look at Job 3, written from 25 to 26, he said, what I fear has not come upon me. So he actually lived in fear. Amen. We also saw the man we're about to read the story, <coughs> Abraham and Elijah. 
Praise God. I'm, I'm trying to build something here. Je, uh, First King 19. Let's read now. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And without her, he had slain all the prophets with a sword. Okay, gone. He said, then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. Verse 3, look at what this great man of God who have just done, you know, he, he, he killed for, you know, at his word, word, over 400 prophets of Baal were killed. Amen. At his word, fire came down from heaven and consumed his sacrifice. People knew there was evidence of God's hands on his life. You know, God's hands on his life was evidential. People knew that he was, you know, he loved God and God was with him. But look at what happened soon after that. And when he saw that, and, and when he saw that, he arose and went, and went for his what, life. And came to Big Sheba, which belonged to Judah, and left the, his servant there. Some scripture says, and he was afraid... And he ran for his life. Amen. No, he was afraid. You see, he has just done battle for God. Killed 400 prophets of Baal. Amen. Fire actually came down from heaven. In other words, he can always say, okay, Jezebel, you're after my life. Okay, I'm going to call fire on you. But yet, amen, the same man that did great things started running away from Jezebel. Amen. Hello. It's from Jezebel actually represents the spirit. Started running away from the spirit of Jezebel. And the question is, well, uh, we are there, uh, in, uh, was uh, 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 Elijah right? Was he right to run away? Did he do the right thing to run away? No. Are you sure? He did the right thing? He was afraid. He, he, was afraid. He, he was afraid. You mean he was not supposed to run? No. Okay. Okay. The truth of the matter is, the law. You see, he was supposed to run. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Hello. He was supposed to run. And I will tell you why. Amen. You see, at that time, the spirit of fear was not defeated. Fear was ruling. The prince and powers of darkness, it, it was their day. Because Jesus had not come at that time. Amen. So fear was ruling. Even though they were great men of faith, they walk in great faith, but there are things that frighten them when they say it. Hello, God's people. So he was supposed to run. Hello? Even Jesus, there was a time in the life of Jesus, really remember in John 8, 59, they wanted to throw stones on him. And the Bible said he escaped. Hello? Why did Jesus escape from them? He could have said, well, look, I'm God here. You know who you're talking to? Hello? <laughs> If you throw a stone, your hand is your hand 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 is gonna hang on the air. But the Bible says he is kept. Hello. Do you know that sometimes your right will kill you? Sometimes your right will kill you. Amen. A time comes when you walk in wisdom. Even though it is your right to do certain things. A man was driving and another guy was following him with a big lorry. And that guy was on his land, and another guy was following him and was blowing, whoa, pa, and he didn't want to clear, you know, go by the side. And that guy with big glory managed to, you know, move his hands and, uh, you know, and later told him and say, your, your right will kill you. So a lot of people today, they have died in their so-called right. Amen, because they refuse to walk and wish them. And of those people say to someone, don't let your right kill you. <coughs> Amen. Okay, now, now he was supposed to run. Why? Now, let's see. The Bible says in the Old Testament, they were living in fear, in fear because of that. God sent Jesus. Now, if you read the book of John, chapter 1, amen. John, first John, sorry, chapter 1, no, chapter 3, verse 8, amen. First John, chapter 3, verse 8. I want to show you that scripture, amen. The B says, For this reason, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil, amen. Shall we read that the one who commits sin is of the devil? Shall we read loud? Everybody, please help me. The one who commits sin is of the devil. Hold it there. It means when I commit sin, I have denied God. Hello? If I commit sin, the Bible says I am of the what? Devil. Is that not scary? Hello? For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed. What? For this purpose to do what? 
to destroy the works of the devil. Why that word? The Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. It implies that before Jesus came, the enemy was working. Hello? He was building something. He was working. Praise God. So he was building fear, building sickness. Amen? And implementing intimidation and oppression over humanity. Then Jesus, no, God therefore sent his son. He saw what men were going through. He couldn't understand why somebody like Abraham could be afraid of his life. God couldn't understand why somebody like Elijah ran away from Jezebel. God couldn't understand why somebody like Job, though a righteous man, was living, you know, in fear. Therefore, he sent his son to decode a law what the enemy was building. A law, he sent Jesus Christ to decode the work of the devil. He said the blood of Jesus is a decoder. A law, so he sent him. For this reason, the Son of God was manifest, was revealed. Jesus was revealed into your life to destroy the works of the devil. And the Lord said to me, one of the works of the devil is fear. Hello, Hebrew 2, 14 to 15. One of the things he bet or he was building before Jesus came was fear. He bet fear all around men. People could see failure. People could see limitation, cloud all over them. They couldn't see greatness. They couldn't see progress. They couldn't see miracle. They could see only intimidation all around them. Now look at what happened. Now since the children, shall we read? Now since the children have flesh and blood in stomach, he also shared his Jesus in, in this, so that through his death, he might destroy the one holding the power of death. That is the devil. Amen? You see, that through his what? His death. Are you saying his? He might destroy what? The one holding the power of what? Death. Oh, glory. So, and the Holy Ghost told me the other day that it takes death to destroy death. That is why people that are afraid of dying, they don't die. There are people that have died even though they are living, but they died 10 years ago. Many missionaries that went to hard places to share the gospel, they died in their mind. Amen? Amen. They died even before they got there. And that is why the enemy have not killed them. Amen. Hello? So Jesus now, God sent his son, how did he destroy the works of the devil? How did Jesus destroy fear? Amen? Through his death, amen, on the cross. Hello? He gave his life. He gave his blood. Amen? Look at that. Verse 15. And free those, amen, who were held in slavery all their life by the fear of death. People who were held in slavery all their life. Praise God. He died in the cross to free them. Praise God. I've learned, do you know, if, if a snake, if you are bitten by a snake, it takes the venom of snake to cure you. Amen? It takes the venom of snake to cure you. Praise God. So it takes the death of Jesus to destroy the power of death. Hello? For, for the power of death, amen, to be destroyed. The power of death is the power of the enemy. The power of death is power of fear. There are people today, they live in fear all their life. They think they will die young. They will die young. That was the fear I used to have. Before I got married, I would always think, maybe before I get, before, it, it, you know, that's a funny fear. I don't know if some of you, do you want me to be honest, somebody? Yeah. Do you want me to be honest now? Yeah. Though I was a pastor, and I'm still a pastor, man. Yeah. I was a pastor, but I used to think, maybe before I get married, I'm going to die. Hello? A lot of shame on me now. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? I was having that thought. I said maybe something was going to happen to me, you know, as soon before I get married. And here am I with a white, beautiful one and three kids. Nobody's talking to me now. I'm still alive. Say to somebody, you will be alive. And see the next day. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. You will not die. You will live and proclaim the goodness of God. Amen. The devil will tell you lies. Say, look, you will not make it. 
Look, you, you will die. You will not see your grandchildren. Or tell you those lies and you imbib it. You take it in. You're not supposed to take it in. Because you are a child of the king. <coughs> you have the blood of Jesus. And you have the written code of God on you. The enemy cannot decode the code of the blood. That is on your forehead. The enemy was lying to me. That maybe I will die before I get married. I haven't even told my wife. This is the first time I'm revealing this secret. <coughs> Some of you here now. Probably the enemy is telling you things that is not of God. You have to rise up. Tell the enemy you are a child of the king. You will not die. You will live and proclaim the goodness of God. You've been destined to live. You've been destined to see your grandchildren. You've been destined to enjoy your success. You will not die. You will live and proclaim the goodness of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will not die, says the Lord. You see, when we speak the word, if you believe it, something enters you. Ezekiel 2 to say, and when he speak it, the spirit entered me. So the word is a spirit. When we declare that you will not die and you believe it, amen, amen. you receive life. Am I might talking to somebody? If you believe it, life owes this into you. Amen. Praise God. You will not die. Stop listening to the voice of the enemy. Whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of your king? Are you listening to the voice of God? It's time for you to rise up in your faith and declare your future. Amen. And declare your future in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Begin to see your future. See that you will not die. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah said something. I think in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 or, or 2 verse 3. No, 2 verse 1 or 3 verse 1. He says, and I, Isaiah, saw. And I, Isaiah, saw the word of the Lord. Hello? <laughs> Praise God. He did mention, I saw the word of the Lord. And if you look at that scripture, you find out that it's a bit grammatical. It, it, it's not grammatically correct. Because you cannot see the word of the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I talking to somebody? Are you seeing my word now? Can you see my word? Isaiah. Praise the Lord. The vision that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Some scripture used that the word he saw. You cannot see my word. In other words, Isaiah saw the word of God through his mental picture. You can see your future through the word of God in his scripture. You can visualize what God will do 10 years from now. If you have living vision, believe you will not die. If you see death, you will have death. Hello? But if you see life, you will have what life? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So Jesus came through his death. He dis, you know, mantled fear. He decoded fear. The blood of Jesus is the greatest decoder. The world have ever seen. Amen. If you want to buy a decoder, buy the blood. Amen. Say to somebody, buy the blood. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You buy the blood. Put the mark of, on, of, of the blood on your forehead. You have no reason to be afraid of tomorrow. For tomorrow is in the hand of God. You say, for I know the future I have for you. I mean, the plan I have for you. The plan to give you the best. The plan to, to bring you to a expected end. God did not say, I'm going to leave you on the way. God, when he's building, he doesn't leave it on the way. He's a God who completes his project. You are a project in the hand of God. You've got to understand it to God's people. We are God's project. And God does not, you know, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't, he, there's no unfinished project in the hand of God. Praise God. God does not leave projects on the way. Praise God. I might tell you somebody. So God is still building you. Still building your children. Still building your career. Still building your future. You haven't seen nothing yet. There are more to what God has destined for your future than you've ever seen. You haven't even tasted half of what God is about to do in your life. Amen. Even as a church, look, I just believe that we haven't seen nothing. I just believe God is going to raise this church so big. Amen. I was reading a book the other day and the man of God said, he said, yeah, church, they call the church. Go, go get that baby. Go get it. Go. Oh my God. Oh God. He said, he said, you know, he said that their child, they call it mega church. Hello, am I taking somebody? They said they call their child the mega church. Hello, even when it was this small church, they call it mega church. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Say to somebody, you are in a mega church. 
really confess it. Maybe you, you don't have faith for this. Say to somebody, you are in a mega church. Yes. yes. That's where we're going. Thank you, Mama McQueenie. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe it. You declare it. You say it. Amen. You believe that God has not finished with us and he has not finished with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. As the scripture has excised me in Colossians 2, reading from 14 and 15. I really want you to take this scripture in Colossians 2, reading from you know, 14 to 15. Look at what he did when he died. Praise God. Look at what he did. The Bible says, blotting out some scriptures that he canceled. Amen. The Bible, blotting out the handwritten of ordinance that was against us. So something was really against you before Jesus died. There were things, almost everything was working against us. Against humanity before he died. So he, he came, he blotted all the stuff that was against you, which was contrary to us. The, some scriptures said the thing that was opposing us and took it out of the way. Hi, yeah, yeah. Did anybody say that? Did you say that? And he, what? he took it out of the way. Nailing it to his cross. He took it out of the way. He took death out of the way. He took poverty out of the way. The thing that was against you, he took it out of the way. So when you feel it, where is it coming from? Because it's not on the, on the way anymore. It's no longer there. You just feel it. But it's not there. Because Jesus took it out. Am I talking to somebody? He took it out. I just want, want somebody to be excited for this revelation. You just be excited. He took poverty out of the way. He took pain out of the way. He took disgrace out of the way. Intimidation and oppression. Limitation. He took it out of the way. And he nailed it on the cross. Hiya, Papa. For 15 says that, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he spoiled them. He made open show of them. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. You know what the Holy Ghost is telling me now? The, the reason he made a show of them openly, so that you will know. Amen? The devil will not come and tell you, look, Jesus did not defeat me. So that you will know that yeah, the day he was disgraced, he was in the open. You saw it. Amen. Praise God. He made a show of the enemy openly. So that you can be living in fear, walking in fear. Oh, everything you're shaking. Oh, it, these things are no, it's no longer there. Amen. I told us last week, most psychologists agree that 95, 85% of what we fear do not actually exist. Amen. It is only 15%. But even that 15%, the Bible says in 2 in, uh, in Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given you the spirit of fear. Amen. <coughs> So 15% is for the world. It's for people who do not know God. It's not for me. A lot. It's not for me. Say fear is not for you. Oh God. Hallelujah. God have not given it to you. If, if secular psychologists believe that 15, 85% of what we fear is not there. Amen. If they believe. <laughs> me, I'm a Christian, but the Bible says God has not given me fear. So even that 15%, they do agree that does exist. I should know that it's not there because God did not give it to me. I only received spirit of God. That is what he gave me when he ascended to the Father. He did not give you fear. So you have no right to live in fear. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can live in fear. For how long will you be living? Oh. That business is going to collapse. Oh, my wife will die. Oh, my kids, they're not going to make it. Are you their God? A lot. Did you give birth to your children? Did you create yourself? A lot. He died for you. He resurrected for you. He ascended on your behalf. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And he's interceding for you. All for you. Hallelujah. He said he did these things, but we don't see it. Hallelujah. People that believe in their cult, whatever they are told to do, they do it. If people, if you know what is cult, 
I mean, if people that believe or belong to God, they always follow the principles. Whatever they ask to do, they do it. And they believe it will work for them. Jesus has died and proffered his blood. Amen. And the Bible tests me because of his blood. I am cleansed. I am saved. My life is covered. Hello. So why do I have to live in fear? Hello. Why can I believe that fear is dead? It was buried in the cross. Am I talking to somebody? Fear of the future was buried in the cross. Hello. Fear of death was buried in the cross. Everything you think of that is disturbing you right now, it's just artificial. It was buried in the cross. Amen. Your healing was provided in the cross. Hello, God's people. Are we a God's people? So why don't you believe? Why don't you believe? Say to somebody, I believe. Say to somebody, I believe. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, when the enemy, when the power of the enemy was destroyed, the Lord showed me something this morning. I wasn't thinking of this scripture. I was reading. And God says in the scripture, hello, please concentrate everybody. The Bible says, in the, the Lord showed me something that anytime he destroys, amen, he overthrows or he dethrones, he will always plant, amen. If you look at Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, reading from 1 verse 10, Jeremiah reading from 1 verse 10, hallelujah. Shall we read God's people? The Bible says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. Hallelujah. So Christians can have power over kingdoms and nations. Amen. Amen. It says eh, to root up one, to pull down two, to destroy three, to, the, the, to throw down four, then to build and plant. Hello. This is God talking to Jeremiah. And the same word is for us today. Right now, God is no longer talking to Jeremiah. He's talking to me and you. This scripture is for you. It's not even for Jeremiah anymore. Praise God. Now, God said, I've set you up to build, to the strong, to uproot. Amen. And then he said, to build and plan. So the Spirit of God told me this morning, anytime God destroys, remember fear was destroyed. Amen. Fear was destroyed in the cross. We remember, right? Through the scripture. We saw it in Hebrew that fear was destroyed in the cross through his death. Amen. So through his death, he destroyed those who have fear of death. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> so when God actually, whenever God destroys stuff, he plans something new. Hello? He plans something new. And let me tell you what God did. Amen. It, through Jesus Christ, soon the power of fear and death was destroyed over your life. If you look at the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, reading from 15. This is scripture everybody, people ignore. They read Romans chapter 8 verse 14, but they don't look at 15. <coughs> Amen. Look at it. Romans 8.15. The Bible says, For ye have not received the spirit of what? Bondage. Again to fear. What is God's people? Shall we read? For ye, or you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Remember in Hebrew, the Bible says he destroyed the spirit that subject, subjected people to bondage of fear. Hello? The Bible says he destroyed it. In Hebrew 2.15. Amen. He destroyed it. Hello, God's people? Now, because he destroyed it, now the Bible says, Now, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage to fear, because it has already been what? Destroyed. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Because it was already destroyed Amen. in the cross. He said, But ye have received the spirit, shall we read together? Ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. <sighs> You've been adopted. Am I talking to somebody? You have received spirit of adoption. The spirit. Now, Abba in Greek means, you know, Abba means sucks. Amen. Source of life. The spirit which you cry, God, you are my source. You have not received the spirit that makes you again to fear. The day you get born again, you did not receive fear. You received spirit of boldness. Spirit of relationship. Now, spirit of Abba Father is spirit of sonship. Is spirit of relationship. Hello, God's people. It means you are not a son. You are a daughter. Hello? Some scripture. For you have received the spirit of sonship. Amen. Amen. Sonship. 
You're not a son. You know, a son, if you're a son, you have relationship with your father. You cannot be with your father. No, no, my case, they don't understand I'm a human. I love my children think I can do everything for them. Am I telling somebody? They think I can do anything for them because they think they are with their father. Whatever they need, they just come. They just need it. They just need it. If they want to eat, they want to eat. They don't care. They don't know if there is food, you know, in my house or not. They just think their father or mother will provide for them. So what God did through Jesus Christ, he adopted you. Hello? He bring you in. Amen? He gave you a spirit when he destroyed fear. The spirit that Christ Abba Father. Spirit of relationship. Spirit that can talk to God. So you know what you have right now is not spirit of bondage. You have spirit that can always go to the throne of room of God. And say, Father, your son has come again. Amen. You can walk up to the presence of God today. And say, Lord, it is me standing in your presence again. Amen. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you've done. Because you, we have, at this moment where we are, we don't live in fear. None of my children is afraid of coming, even when I'm busy. When I don't want to see anybody in my study room. If nobody comes, Zoe will always come there. She doesn't know when I am busy. Because she has spirit of sonship. Amen. That is what you have received. Yes. Because fear was destroyed in the cross. And you have access to your father. You cannot walk in into the throne of room of God without scare. Amen. You can talk to God without scare. You have no reason to think anything is going to go wrong with you. Because you live in the presence of God. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. The t- from the day you get born again, you know, you start living in the presence of God. <clears throat> from the day. You got born again. You from that same day. You start living in the presence of God. You live in there. You do where there. You, you inhabit in the presence of God. Amen. The presence of God is your habitation. Amen. Hello? Because the door is open. You can assess. Amen? You can assess, you know, in the door. You can just, you know, get, get entrance to what God has for you. You don't go to God like a dying Christian, like a weakling Christian. You feel that you are not accepted. No matter what my children will do or have done, they are always accepted in my presence. As long as they are ready to say sorry. Amen. God is interested in your life. Amen. Allah? Amen. You may be living, you may have been living in, a, in, 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 in fear because of ignorance. And it angers God if I'm with my daughter and I know I can protect her. And some people are coming to scare her. And I say, no, don't cry. I will protect you. And she's still crying. I'm not going to feel good. I'm going to feel she don't trust me. I will not feel that she have confidence. Amen. You are with God. You live in his presence. Say to your neighbor, you live in the presence of God. You live there. That is where you live. That is where you dwell. Praise God. Amen. You live there. Ah, yeah, yeah. We live in his presence. And because we live in his presence, we have no reason to be afraid. Amen. Why must I be afraid? The Bible says he has ascended. He's at the right hand of the Father interceding, yes. praying for me. Amen. He's not sleeping. He that keepeth Israel neither sleep nor slumber. I'm glad I have a God that doesn't sleep even when I'm sleeping. He doesn't sleep because he's watchful over you. He cares for you. He loves you. You don't know how much God cares for you. If you will only know how he cares, you will will overcome whatever that is troubling your life today. You'll be able to see the future through the future, through the picture. You see the picture of the future from where you are. You just know it that you will make it. You just know it that you will not fail. You just know it that you live in his presence. You cannot cry, Abba Father. No reason to be afraid. Am I talking to somebody? You see, I was just thinking about this man, you know, Peter. You know, what did they receive? Hello, God's people. Peter, you know, if you look at the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, chapter 4, reading from, reading from, reading from 7 and 10 and 8 and 18 and 20, you find that they hear somebody in chapter 3. 
And the religious people came after them and said, How? Why did you heal? And da 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 da. And Peter said, Look, I'm surprised. If you have called me today, you know, to ask us, you know, if you have called, if he called us to ask you, why did we heal somebody? They said, say, Who will be surprised that you have called us to question us? Why did we heal somebody that is what? That is lame. He said, We are surprised to hear that. He said, We heal him in the name of that same Jesus whom you crucified. Why this? Remember, they were afraid. When Jesus died, they were afraid. They were so scared. They, they, they were in one place, you know, praying. And the Holy Ghost came on them. You know what came on them? Spirit of sonship, relationship. Spirit of boldness came on them. When spirit of boldness rested on them, they were healing and doing all sort of miracle. And, the, 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 you know, religious force called them and said, Hey, why were you doing all this stuff? They said, look, is it good to obey God rather than man? The people wanted to arrest them, yet they were so bored. Hello? Amen. Somebody's showing you a gun and say, look, don't do this again because next day if you do, I'm going to shoot you. And you're saying, look, I'm going to obey God rather than you. Amen. Ask yourself, what spirit do they receive? Hello? They receive spirit of sonship. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That was what they received. They receive something. You cannot receive something and look the same. <coughs> a lot. The Bible said in Proverbs 28 verse, verse 1. He said, a righteous man is as bold as a lion. You cannot receive God's grace and look the same. Because it is the grace of God that makes great. The grace makes great. Praise God. They receive grace. They were not the same. They break out from the place they were. We are, they were afraid. Amen. They, they opened the door, went out, start preaching the gospel. Just in one day, 3,000 people gave their life to God. They could look at the people and say, you killed him. They were so bad because they received something. Ah, yeah, yeah. You, you see, we are believers, but our neighbors don't know that we are believers. <coughs> A lot. Tell your neighbors that you're a believer. Oh, glory be to God. If they feel headache, say, well, let me catch. I pray for my neighbors on the, on the driveway. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. One day, one of my neighbors, she said, she, she said she's, she's having headache. I said, she, do you believe in prayer? She said, yes. I rebuke the headache right in the driveway. I didn't say, I'm going to go and come. Okay, I pray for you in my room, right in my driveway. And I went. One day, she came to me and said, oh, you know, when you pray for me, that headache went. Am I talking to somebody? There was a guy that cleaned this place. It's a sick guy. And I was walking down the one day. He told me he had, he's having severe headache. It comes maybe every two months or three months. And I said to him, do you believe in prayer? He said, yes. I said, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. And I rebuked that, 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 you know, that whatever it is. I mean, the, the migrant headache. And then I went. I didn't think, I wasn't thinking, well, is he going to get healed? I've just done my duty. It does not take me anything to do what God has called me to do. And after three months, last three weeks, he saw me. And he said, do you know that day you pray for me here? He said, sick. Amen. You know, this guy that have, you know, he said, you know, you know, I got healed. Amen. Praise God. He asked me to pray for him again. I said, come to the church. <laughs> he said, okay, he's going to come. And he didn't come. I met him again the, the, the upper week. I said, why didn't you come? He said, oh, but I'm going to summer when I come back. He went to get another prayer free. I said, now nah, you got to come to the church. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Praise God. You see, if you have this spirit of sonship, the Bible says you have not received the spirit that makes you slave again to fear. But spirit of relationship, of sonship, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Amen. If you receive it, you will always be crazy. People will see your craziness for Christ. You can't pocket Christ in your pocket. You pocket Jesus. You're Christian every Sunday. You clap, we clap our hand and we feel good. And we go to the street. We don't let nobody know who we are. Oh, glory. Am I talking to somebody? When I was traveling to Korea, you know, newly. Um, so somebody told me I was, I was with a guy. I met him in the airport in, at, at Paris. And we're talking. I've not traveled before. And we were to transit in Hong Kong. We were to be there for, for about him. For four days, I was transit before I started going to Korea. And when we got there, he told me, let's go to the club and watch naked women. A lot. 
And I said to him, well, he didn't know I was a Christian, praise God. I just met him on the way. We, just, we were just shocking. I didn't just tell him who I am. I said, no. He said, what? I said, no. I said, it's not right. He said, are you a pastor? Amen. Amen. <laughs> praise God. You see, there was no, I didn't have my Christian brothers. Nobody will know if I mess up there. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, by the way, it was a foreign land. But nowhere is foreign before God. Hello? But I told him, no. No. He tempted me. He pushed me. I said, no, that's not. And he was going to Taiwan. Praise God. And I will be in the room there. We are lodging in the same room. He will go out and do his stuff and come back. Hello? But I have the courage to say, no. I don't want to be a believer where folks are seeing me. I want to be a believer even where folks are not seeing me. I need to be a believer in the presence of the Almighty. Am I talking to somebody? Be a believer where you are. Be a believer, an ambassador where you are. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God. He knew no sin, but he took our own sin and gave us his own righteousness. Second Corinthians, reading from 5 verse 21. And if I, okay, for example, the Bible says in Proverbs 21, verse 1, a righteous man will be what? As bad as lion. Bad as lion. Amen. Now, I am, are you a righteous man? Are you righteous? Amen. Somebody tell me about it. <laughs> are you righteous? Amen. Can I, please, please, hold on, hold on. Listen, let's just call. Um, those that are righteous, raise up your hand. Amen. Are you sure? Yes. Ah, you're righteous? <laughs> But those that are not righteous, please raise up your hand. Those that are not righteous, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. We have one, two, three. We have three people that are not righteous here. Ah, oh, they are being very humble. They are very humble people. But let's look at what the Bible says. Proverbs says what? Look at it. They bought what? The wicked flee when no man pursueth him. But the righteous are bold as what? As lion. Righteous people don't what? Don't live what? In fear. Now, for those of you that are righteous people here, the Bible says you are as bold as what? Lion. Okay, look at it in, 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 in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse 21. Let's look at what the Bible says. Hello. Let's see what the Bible says. Amen. Ho. It says, for, the, for he had made him to be sin for us. I Meaning he has taken your sin. Amen. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Why this? You are now righteous in you. Amen. Just with you. Because the Bible says, no one is what? Righteous. So I can understand why few of our brothers said they are not righteous. But we're here to declare to them today that they are righteous in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Righteous in him. So now, even if you don't feel righteous, but because you are in him, you are righteous. Hello. Even if you messed up yesterday, but because you are in him, you are still righteous. But I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to tell you to go and do stuff. Amen. Because you are the righteousness of God. A lot of people, they leave the house of God. They say, you know what? The grace is there. We are righteous. You just leave the house of God. You go and do stuff that a believer ought not to do. There's some time when we have weaknesses. But then, when you got to that point, remember your covenant with God. One of the ways to overcome sin is to have a covenant. If you have a covenant, even when you get to the pit where you are about to fall, you will always go back because of your covenant. Hello? Have a covenant with God. I say, Lord, I'm going to make a covenant today not to do this again. Hello? So the Bible says, we are the righteousness of Christ. It means, now I'm a righteous man. Your righteousness does not depend on your righteousness. On what you've done good or not. Is there anybody here, God's people? Amen. It's dependent on the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, at any occasion, you are declared righteous as a believer. You're supposed to walk in badness because you are a righteous believer. You are righteous in him. A lot. So say to somebody, be bold. Be born because you are righteous. I was listening to this great man of God last night. David Yongicho. Praise God. Amen. Because we are building a mega church. So I'm listening to people that have built a mega church. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hello. Our church is going to grow big. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I went to listen to him last night. And I was there. I was having conference with him. 
and listening to several messages he preached. And he said, people ask him, how, how have you been able to do all this thing, to have a church of 500,000? It is, it is assumed that he has the biggest church in the world, the Vyongi Church of Korea. Amen? And, and people ask him, what kind of gift do you have? Dr. David, he said, he only have gift of boldness. He said, if he wants to heal and sense boldness, he will lay his hands. Hello? If he wants money and he sends boldness, he will walk where he will get the money. <coughs> Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Is there anybody here? Amen. He will walk to a place where he is going to get the money. Because he said anytime he sends boldness, he knows that God is about to do something. It means he doesn't live in fear. He lives in boldness. So he said one day, one of his you know, you know, son was, you know, he said the guy was lame. I think when he was born, he was lame from birth to so. Um, and he said he keep on praying for that guy because that, that man, the elder was so committed. He was so faithful. He was a faithful elder. So he prayed for that guy one year, two years, three years. And that boy, did, you know, he didn't walk. And he has seen many people walk in the past, but that guy didn't walk for about three years. And he was feeling the pain. So one day they were, they were having dinner. And uh, most of the church elders, they were having dinner. And one of the, 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 the mother of that boy, you know, walked to his, where he was. I don't know what happened, what the mother said to him, to him they were eating. He felt compassion for the, woman, for the mother. And he looked at him and said, today, the Lord said to me, or he walked up to the mother to say, today, the Lord said to me, your daughter, your son, we walk. He sent the burden, the anointing of the Holy Spirit came on him. He said, today, God says, your son, we walk tonight. And after he said, and he looked at the wife and said, let him say, look at what I said to them. The wife said, are you sure what you're talking about? Are you sure? He said, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit just came on me. I declared to them. The wife said, well, if it doesn't happen tonight, what happened to you? And the boy was not there. Hello? It's not that he was laying hands on that boy to God, you know, to walk. He said, tonight he's going to walk, meaning he's going to walk wherever he is. Okay. Because of what the wife said, so he was so intimidated, he became scared. So he went home and said, God, I have declared this thing before the presence of people. And if it doesn't happen tonight, they will call me a false prophet. So he said, all through the night, he was praying that that boy walk in his house. Praise God. So what happened? When the parents got home, they said to their son, say, I brought a, we brought a message from Pastor Yongicho. They said, Pastor Yongicho said, tonight you will walk. And the boy said, Mama, I've not been walking for a long time. How can I walk? He said, Pastor Youngie just said, tonight you will walk. And so they added the son, you know, to walk. He couldn't walk. So they prayed for about one hour and keep on praying and was adding him to walk. And the boy stood up and started walking. Hey. That same night. Remember, this is not a lying testimony. This is a man known around the world. Praise God. That night, David, Pastor David was praying in his house for God to confirm his word. And these people were acting on the word that the men of God have spoken. The Bible says, believe the prophet, you will do what? Prosper. And believe the word of God, you will be established. So establishment comes through the word and prosperity comes through the ways of the prophet. Hello, those people. He said the next morning when he got to office, it was like a riot. People were screaming. He said, what happened? They said, that guy has walked. Praise God. He said his gift is boldness. If he feel bored, he can do. He went to a bank when they were going bankruptcy. He went and said to the, you know, every people were online waiting for, to see the bank manager. It was the last day of the year. And he was looking at himself and they were about to declare him bankruptcy. Amen. And they needed to pay for their projects and so many things. They needed money. And they will arrest him if, he, if that day he did not pay. So he was thinking, Lord God, what will I do, Lord? And God said, go to Hanan Bank. Go and tell them, you need money. He, do, he doesn't have collateral, nothing. He walked to Hanan Bank. It was the, you know, it's like the last day of the year. They were closing. And he was standing there. He looked at the line. And he said, when will I be able to meet the, you know, the bank president? So he, he called one of the ladies and said, I want to see the bank president. The lady said, do you have an appointment? Do you have, he, he, he said, no, I don't have an appointment. He said, um, after some time again, he went to the lady and said to the lady, you know, I come from the highest authority. Said so the Holy Ghost told him, give him an idea. He went back to the lady and said, I come from the highest authority. 
So the lady thought maybe he's coming from the president of the nation. So the lady said, okay, where? The lady walked into the office and talked to the, to the president of the bank and said, um, somebody is here waiting for you to come from the, probably from the president. And, the, and he, immediately the lady walked out. <coughs> immediately the lady walked out. He, you know, he said, the lady came out from the office and said, call him to come in. Immediately he walked into the office. The man looked at him and smiled. He said, are you the man from the president? He said, um, he looked at him and smiled. He said, I come from a person higher than the president. And the man said, who? Oh. He said, I came from God, King of King and Lord of Lords. And the man looked at him and said, nobody have, no, nobody have approached him in, in such a bold way before. I said, what do you want? He explained. He said to the man, you know what? I have a 10,000 church. And we are in financial difficulties. He said, we need a half a million dollars. If you will borrow me this money, I will ask all our church members to start doing business and banking in this bank. Wow. <laughs> Hello? And the man looked at him and said, do you have any collateral? He said, no. <laughs> you don't have anything? He said, no. He said, but we don't borrow money without anything to show for it. He said, but the Lord asked me to come. And the man looked at him and said, as the, the secretary took, to get to know a little about him, this, to, you know, the secretary walked in again and said, yes, he's the pastor of such and such church. And he said, okay, we don't borrow money without collateral. He said, but what I'm going to do, I will borrow you from my own money. I will give you $500,000, but from my own money, so you can pay whenever. And that same day, it was signed and transferred into his account. He said, the wife has suggested to him, say, go, go to Japan. That's it, because if, if that day they, they default, he, he was going to be arrested. He said, no, he's a man of integrity. If he fly to Japan, you know, you know catch one of <laughs> the next available flight, he's going to, you know, he's going to mess up his integrity. So he he seek the Lord and God said, go to the bank. He went to the bank and it worked. The money was transferred. And after many years, that man woke up to him and said, Dr. Youngicho, do you remember me? He said, no. So I'm the man when you were in financial crisis. I am the man. You, you came to, I was the president of Susan So Bank then. And I was the man who borrowed you that money. And he said, no, but now I have a problem. He said, my problem, my wife, you know, she's a cancerous person. She has cancer. And I believe the only person that can heal her Heal her is God. And I think God will heal her through you. And he asked them, are you a believer? They said, no. And he, he explained the message of salvation. And prayed a simple prayer of salvation. And the wife got healed instantly after many years. The Bible said, cast your bread up in the water. For in many days from now, you will receive it. As if you're here today, you're walking in fear, walk in fear no more. Live here today, walk into banks. Am I talking to somebody? Walk in, if you have vision, business project, take it to a bank. Don't look at your color. Praise God. Go again and again and again. Am I talking to somebody? David says in Psalm 24 verse 4, Even though I walk through, through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Say, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk, I may be walking through it, but even though I walk it through it, I will fear no evil. Psalm 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? So if you're here today, you've been intimidated. You think that it's not going to work. You think that life is not going to change. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's the dirtiness from the pit of hell. The devil is throwing that dirty word into your ear. Those words is not in God's dictionary. And it does not exist. Amen? Before God. You've been destined to succeed. Destined to win. Destined to overcome. You are a success yourself. God has created you to succeed. So scare your fear from today. Fear is the number one, you know, success of progress. Matthew 25, 25. The young man said, I was afraid, so I hide the talent. So today, you know, rise above your fear. Rise above that sickness. Rise above that pain. Rise above that intimidation. See yourself as the next person that will be promoted in your workplace. The next man, see that you are that man. Declare over your life. Declare over your children. 
declare over your situation. You are born to win. You are born to conquer. Make a resolve. Resolve not to be afraid from today again. If anything, even though your blessing is over the mountain, go over there and get it. If you know your blessing is buried in the valley, go there and get it. <clears throat> anything you can do to conquer in line with the word of God, do it and conquer. All you've got to do is to obey the voice of God. Seek him. And if God says it, he will do it. I see God saying something over your life in the name of Jesus. I see God making promises over your life in the name of Jesus. I see God turning that situation around in the name of Jesus. I see that yoke break over your life. I see that shackles break over your life. I see that manacles break over your life. You're, you're coming back again. You're bouncing back again. That business is bouncing back again. That marriage is bouncing back again. That relationship is coming to fruition again. Your God is turning around everything about your children. I see this nation responding to your need. In the name of Jesus. I see life changing for you. I see things changing on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, a shift in the atmosphere, a shift in the atmosphere because of you. In the name of Jesus, though you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but I see you coming out from it. I see you coming out from that pit. Joseph came out from his own pit. You will come out from your own pit. In the name of Jesus. Daniel came out from his own pit. You will come out from your own pit. In the name of Jesus. Shadrach came out from his own pit. You will come out from your own pit. In the name of Jesus. David came out from his own pit. You will come out from your own pit. That same God of yesterday. Is the same God of today. And forever. That same God that protected David from the hand of Saul. Is the same God you are serving. I say you overcome the spirit of Saul. I say you overcome the spirit of Jezebel. In the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken over you. That shackle is broken over you. Yeah, ka, 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 ka. That veil is on fire. That mask is on fire. I come again that near sources syndrome. In the name of Jesus. From this day you will grow 10 feet tall. You will grow 10 feet tall. You will overcome your fear. I see your hair grow again. As the hair of something grow again. May your hair grow again. May your hair grow again. Oh glory. It was crept off you before but it's growing again. Your hair was crept before but it's growing again. Your hair was shaved by problems in the past but it's growing again. Your hair was shaved by pains in the past but it's growing again. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's growing again. Said somebody, my hair is growing again. <coughs> oh, 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 it's growing again. It's growing again. It was shaved in the past. Somebody shaved you. Problem shaved you. Never shaved you. But it's growing again. It's coming back to life. It's coming back to life. Your destiny is coming back to life. Your marriage is coming back to life. Your womb is coming back to life. Somebody lock it up, but it's coming back to life. Things is about to shift in your family. It's about to shift in your family. I see a shift in the spirit on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Shift in your business in the name of Jesus. It's coming back again. Life is coming back. Grace is coming back. Deliverance is coming back. Healing is coming back. Whatever you're going through, I see you overcome. Overcoming spirit is on you. The Bible said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Those that are born of God, whatever that is born of God, overcoming the world, even our faith. Whatever, even your, ch your chickens, your business, the Bible said, whatever, including you, that is born of God, overcoming the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It's the size of your faith today. Faith to prosper. Faith to be healed. Faith to be relieved. Faith to be delivered. Faith to be significant. Faith to be relevant. Be relevant in the generation. May anointing of relevance hit you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of relevancy. 
Somebody turn into prayer. Somebody turn into prayer. Come back and Somebody turn into prayer. Walk into that places he couldn't walk before. Do those things he couldn't do before. For God has not given you the spirit of you. Do those things he couldn't do before. Oh ya ka pa 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 pa. Oh ya ka pa 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 pa. Oh ya pa pa pa. Do those things he couldn't do before. Do those businesses he couldn't do before. Oh ha ya ba 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 se ke ke. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Oh ya ba ke ke. There is a pregnancy in the air right now. Oh ya ba 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 se ke ke. There is a button up in the air. Something has been bought. Something has been bought at right now. Tap into it. Tap into it. Tap into it. Go persecute. Tap into it. Tap into that grace. Tap into that anointing. Tap into that fire. Tap into that greatness. Somebody tap into it. Oh yeah, ba 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 ba. Somebody tap into it. The atmosphere is charged. The atmosphere is pregnant. The atmosphere is pregnant. The atmosphere is pregnant. The atmosphere is pregnant. Who ya bahandere? Who ya bahandere? Who ya bahandere ya baka? Who ya bahandere ba sokorbo? Who ya bahandere ba cross the kerekia? Who ya bahandere ba indere ba sikelebo? Somebody pray, somebody pray. Your hair is growing again. You were caged in the past. You were imprisoned in the past. But now your hair is growing again. The Bible says the hair of something grew again. The power of something grew again. The anointing of Samson grew again. His hair grew again. Somebody pray. Somebody tap into this, into it. The atmosphere is pregnant. The atmosphere is pregnant. Tap into the flow. Tap into the flow. Tap into the flow. Resolve to do things they couldn't do before. Resolve to do things they couldn't do before. Oh, ya ba 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 ba. Ha ya ba 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 ba. Ha ya ba 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 ba. Resolve to do things he couldn't do before. Oh, ya ba 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 se ke ke ke. Ya ba 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 re ke po se ke ke. Oh, glory. I command things to open, to pop up right now. I command things to pop up. I command things to pop up. Oh, ra pa ko chu ka 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 ka. Oh, Oh, you are you you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Hiya, You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you, alive we reign. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. See his awesomeness. You are awesome in this place, mighty God, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you alive we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Somebody sing his awesome now. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, heaven Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you 
are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God, mighty God, you are awesome, awesome in Lord, this hey, mighty, mighty God. awesome, awesome Lord, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Yes, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's you awesome. are awesome in this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. You are awesome in this place, happy Father. You are worthy of our praise. Lift your hands up and worship him. You are awesome. Lift your hands up and worship him. Mighty God. Yes, he's awesome. He's awesome and he's here. You are awesome in this place. Happy Father. Invite him into. You are into you. Invite him in. Invite him in. He's here to meet you, to you at your point of need. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Receive from him this morning. Receive. Receive it. You Receive are it now. Awesome Receive it. Place, Receive it. Mighty God. He is here. He is here. You are awesome in this place, Heaven Father. You are worthy of our praise. Awesome in this place, mighty God. Parabo Sharaba. You are awesome in this place. If you have something to break, if you have fear of fear over your life, start start praying against it right now. The Bible says, even Jesus rebuked the stone. The fear, that fear could be your stone. Could you rebuke that stone? Rebuke it. Whatever you are afraid of. Whatever you're afraid of, rebuke it. Rebuke it. Rebuke it. Whatever. Whatever. Are you afraid you will not make it in life? Are you afraid that you will never be successful? Your business, your, your marriage will not be successful. Or your children. Or, or, or you never give birth to a baby. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Are you afraid that you never make it in your academic? Are you afraid that people, nobody accepts you? And you think you never make it. Are you afraid that you never make it in this nation, even with immigration? Whatever. Or in your company where you work. What is that fear? Bring it to the throne room right now. Hand it over to God. This is your time. Just hand it violently, hand it over to God. There are some demons you got to rebuke violently. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist to the time of Christ, the kingdom of God suffered violent. And the men of violence will take it by force. Are you afraid that somebody has stolen your destiny? Or that some witchcraft, witchcraft has been done against you? Whatever you are afraid of, begin to overcome it right now through the blood. The Bible says, for we overcome him by the word of our testimony, by the things you say. And by the blood of the lamb. The things you say is as effective as the blood. Overcome something. Overcome something this morning. Yes, overcome something, gosh people. Are you afraid you will never make it in that journey right now you are into? You are in a journey best known to you. And you think you will never make it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That voice of lie is, is, is silenced in the spirit right now. By his spirit we silence that voice of lie. 
that voice of death that voice of intimidation that voice of oppression we silence it in the name of Jesus oh. I want you to repeat after me repeat repeat it violently say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I stand as a child of God. I stand in my position. In my authority. As a Christian. And I renounce. I reject. I revoke. That voice of fear. Over my life. My family. And career. I renounce it. I declare that voice a liar. In the name of Jesus. For God have not given me the spirit of fear. Therefore, every fear in my life is illegal. I declare that fear illegal. Fear of death, you are illegal. Fear of lack of sources, you are illegal. Fear of limitation, you are illegal. I come against thee in the name of Jesus. For we overcome you by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Every fear of my life, I overcome you today through the power of my confession and the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I command spirit of fear to be buried today. <laughs> be buried in the name of Jesus. That power of fear, I command thee, fall into the grave. In the name of Jesus, I overcome fear. I overcome lack. I overcome confusion. I overcome limitation. In the name of Jesus, that power of limitation over my life, break. In the name of Jesus, that spirit of intimidation. Depart now in the name of Jesus. That spirit of lack that creates fear in my life. Get out from my life in the name of Jesus. I am a winner. I am born to live, born to succeed. I am what my Bible says I am. I am a child of God, destined for success. I am hanging out with God in the realm of the spirit. I stand in the realm of the spirit in the position of a winner. I stand in a victory position. I am standing in a victory position. I am not trying to win. I am already a winner. I'm not trying to receive it. I have already received it. I'm not trying to succeed. I've already succeeded. The giants are made for me. Those giants are made for me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm entering to that land that have my name in it. That land belongs to me. That land belongs to me. That Jericho is fallen. You Jericho, fall down now. In the name of Jesus, fall into the enemy's territory. Fall into the enemy's territory. In the name of Jesus, you Jericho. Wall of Jericho fall into the enemy's territory in the name of Jesus. I march into that land. I march into that land. I march into that land. I march in nine the spirit. I march in nine the spirit. Thank you, Lord. But that business is growing. That marriage is succeeding. All oh, those children are doing well. Oh, glory. Father, our society is overcoming, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we see peace all around us. We see success all around us. We see victory all around us. We see hope all around us. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, hope sees the next day. Father, thank you for impartation of hope. Oh, Rabbi, thank you for impartation of hope. If anybody just anybody need a special prayer or need a hope, I just want to release something, you know, under this under this influence. You need a hope. You need an impartation of hope. You need impartation of hope. 
You need some impartation. Just come out. Just come out. Just a few minutes. Be faster because no time. Oh. Oh. Father, release. Just come out. <coughs> need impartation. Impartation of boldness. Impartation of hope. Oh. Oh. Oh, Shiva Haraba. Oh, Shiva Haraba. Oh Lord, <laughs> you may have lost hope. You may not, you may have told that it's not going to work. <laughs> you have tried so hard, and yet it looks like it's not working. <laughs> you have quit trying. You have quit praying. You may have quit studying your scripture because you have tried so hard. You can't see nothing but fear. But God is here. Oh. Oh. Let's receive. Something will break off over you. Something, anything. Something is breaking over you right now. Something is breaking off. Something is breaking off. As something is breaking off, God will be imparting something. Holy Spirit, move. Move. The Holy Spirit, move. Remove something. Remove something from your people. Remove that fear. Remove that lack of boldness. Remove that intimidation. And let spirit of intimidation, let spirit of boldness get in trance right now. Let anointing of boldness get in trance right now. Let something your people are struggling with break off. Break off right now. Break off right now. Break off right now. Anointing of impartation. Oh, a strong glory is falling on you. This is an impartation. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it. Take flow. A flow. A strong impartation. Let it come in such a way. Greater joy. Greater joy. Greater joy. Hope. 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 Spirit of hope. Enter you. Hope. Hope. Overwhelm you. Hope. Hope receive of a winning grace of hope under this unction is yours for the taking. It's yours for the taking. It's yours for the taking. Hope. <sighs> Anointing of hope. Take it. Take it. Take. Hope. 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 Father, release my leg intent to more nations to live more longer. Take it. Oh, hope. 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 Grace of hope. Father, let's shoot up right now. Shh, I release hope. 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 Strong impartation. I release it on you. Oh, Holy Ghost. Oh. 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 Met your loins, every part of your body, let his impartation take it in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, Koraba and Abasha. Ay, 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 the fire is on you, it's been released. Receive, 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 it's clad in you. Release that hope, that hell from this day. I come against hopelessness, I break fear. Receive this impartation. Oh. Father, I break at whatever your servant may have struggled or is struggling with. Whatever your servant is struggling with. I break it now. I break it now. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. Everything that's done at that addition. Come out in the name of Jesus. I command the power. Come out in the name of Jesus. The power of addition of anything. Come out in the name of Jesus. I break it now. I break it now. I break it. I break it. Come out. Come out. And hope into you. Hope. 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 I command every addition of anything. Anything that has rendered you hopelessness. Break in the name of Jesus. 
Be free. Be free. Be free. Freedom. Freedom from hopelessness. Freedom from hopelessness. Freedom from fear. Freedom from oppression. Freedom from intimidation. Freedom from limitation. Hi. Bro Raj, God is opening door. I just feel the fire of God. It's such a strong fire right now as I'm standing here. I just, I just feel that that fear is melting everything that is contrary to the plan of God towards your life. Take grace to succeed. I break spirit of hopelessness. May you be visited today. 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 Mark the beginning of your greater visitation in Northland. Yeah, hayaba, hayaba, hayaba. Receive the anointing. Receive the impartation of hope. Yes, receive. Yes, 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 yes. Father, let your spirit enter him. Let your spirit enter him. Spirit of hope. Overtake him now. May you be a lender from this day. In this nation, be a lender. Thank you, Jesus. Hayaba, baba. The name of Jesus. Oh God. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your anointing, Lord. Thank you for a mighty presence, God. Hope is resting on you. Hope is resting on you. Anointing of hope. Spirit of hope. Enter you. Yes, yes. No more hopelessness. No more hopelessness. The Lord, the Lord Almighty has flushed away. Spirit of hopelessness. From this day shall come to pass. That you will live to be a testimony, not just give a testimony. You will be a standing testimony. Receive. Thank you, Lord. Father, impart hope. Everyone sitting here today. Impart hope to everyone sitting here today. Hope for the future. Amen. Hope for the future. The hope that sees the next day. Hope that sees the next day. Hope that sees tomorrow. Rest and knows. In Jesus' name. Let's quickly take our offering. Okay. We, we quickly take our offering. Bro, 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 keep on going on. Keep on going on. Shall we give a solemn offering unto the Lord? Speak over your offering. Speak over your offering. Speak over it. You may want to bring it to the altar here. You can come and bring it to the altar. You are having a contact with the anointing in the altar. Don't just give offering. Speak over that offering. Speak salvation. Speak deliverance over it. Speak healing over your offering. Whatever you want to see this offering be, the fruit, speak over it. <laughs> 